Hello guys and welcome to another David Zamolata. In today's video, I want to tell you why you should not throw your alternator away. Here's why. Chances are this $19 part has failed and it makes no sense to be buying a $300 alternator because I'm going to show you how to install it and it's very, very simple. Now what you're looking at here is the brushes. Also, voltage regulator could fail, which is also just as easy to replace, and I will show you where it's located. And, of course, if your alternate is squeaking, you may need some bearings. So, I have here a rebuild kit that I purchased for $19, which includes two bearings. One small one and one large one. I will not be replacing bearings in this video, but in the future video, I will. I only like to replace stuff that is actually broken and on this alternator I believe it's the brushes. I've taken the alternator apart and I did notice the brushes were worn out. So this whole kit costs $19. If you want to buy this as well, the link is going to be in the description below. But keep in mind, if you spend a little extra, you're going to get an old voltage regulator and that's probably going to be the cause anyways. No, the brush is usually the cause. but getting that extra part might actually be worth your while. So I went ahead and risked it, just got the magnets. I always say magnets when I actually mean to say brushes because they do resemble magnets. But anyways guys, let's go ahead and actually install it. So we're going to need to remove this plastic cover. That simple. Here's the voltage regulator. Here's where the brushes are located and here's where the voltage regulator is. Once you remove one, there's a couple uh, more bolts to remove another. Very simple. So let's go ahead and actually replace the brushes. Here's that bolt. I kind of like bolts with the Phillips head. So here it is, it comes out. So if we take this old one here <clears throat> and uh, let's compare the differences. I guess let's put them like this. Here's an old one and here's a new one. It's quite obvious to me that these are halfway worn. So they're not gonna be creating a good contact. Therefore, they're going to be creating a uh, very little current uh, for the for the you know for the alternator to actually charge um, you do have to compress these inside uh, before you install them and let me show you how to do that before you install the brushes it's very important to press the brushes down you're just gonna be really careful press one down and then press another one down you could just do that like that with your finger and then you could have like a little nail or something that could go inside and I'm basically using this little drill it worked perfectly last time for me so I'm just feeling it as it goes through so as you could see the brushes are perfectly hidden right now so now we're just going to install it right here and you could see they perfectly went right into place so all we got to do now is just go ahead and replace this and now let's go ahead and actually replace another screw I'm just gonna go right here everything is on and now we're gonna remove our little makeshift tool and everything has engaged. So let's test this by spinning the alternator. Now it spins and stops a little bit. Before it was just kind of like spinning freely. I know I did not test it in this video, but it's okay. So over here, last time we had a little issue uh, with this bolt. Uh, it's just, it was a little bit stuck. So it got a little bit deformed. So it was, uh, it was slightly out. But I don't have no problem with the voltage regulator because my alternator was given charge, but it was just not enough charge. So I know it's because of the brushes. All we got to do now is go ahead and actually just replace this cover. Simply change our little, little um, tool here and reinstall these bolts or nuts. Guys, I like to make up names for parts. Get used to it. <laughs> I say instead of brushes, I say magnets. Instead of 
instead of screws I say bolts and instead of nuts I say bolts everything's bolts to me so anyways guys it is now repaired it is time for us to install it I just installed my alternator into my Chrysler 300 after I have replaced the brushes and this is a alternator monitor um, as you could see it's charging very nicely at 13.39 volts and 13.50 with lights on um, I can turn off the lights and immediately we see a little jump not too much it's a 13.55 so it does not make I guess much difference uh, with the lights on or off and uh, let's see I'm gonna put an automatic of course um, because I have LED lighting um, therefore it doesn't really make much difference but I think this is actually very nice it's um, it's considered fixed so guys if your alternator is not behaving consider replacing the brushes it's actually very cheap if you have a budget that's a little bit bigger go ahead and pick up the brushes as well in the set it's gonna cost you about double about 40 bucks instead of 20 and you're gonna at least have a better chance at fixing it all in one go so you don't have to do the job twice to somebody that don't want to get back in there maybe that were worth a try because it's just two more bolts and you got the voltage regulator replaced guys as you can see there's no check engine lights on but i went ahead and actually took my scanner did the run anyways um this is using uh one of the uh, scan tools uh this is zurich zr13 uh from harbor tools and freight uh, you could pick it up for a lot cheaper like 100 bucks or less on amazon i'll include a link to it in the description below but anyways we have one start code as you could see it has to do with the transmission control module and it says battery was disconnected and that is true except not so much because battery has died because the alternator has died so we're going to go ahead and actually delete this code and go ahead and hit yes and it's going to delete it even though it was not showing up on the computer it is good that there's going to be no check engine lights on whatsoever that's definitely a good thing there you go. with my scan tool there is a way to perform an alternator test and i have to get the vehicle up to 2000 rpms for 20 seconds and then turn the lights off and then idle at normal speeds and as you can see charging voltage within specification and it's telling me that it's charging at 13.47 volts i think before we go um i want to show you some extras that i got first of all i did get extra two brushes which is great so i can actually take them and rebuild this little system right here um, obviously i'm going to have to solder them out and rebuild it and if you're just picking up a couple brushes like this man this is probably cost like a dollar a few dollars um my kit came with brushes with extra brushes and two magnets i mean two magnets two bearings um this whole kit cost 19 dollars. that's it but there is no need for me to replace these bearings my alternator is not squeaking however i do have other uh, alternators and if i find one that i need to replace bearings on i'll actually do that now sometimes some alternators they have this pulley fail this particular one pulley does not fail because it's actually very heavy duty but i have some bosch ones that these pulleys they do fail and it's like $80 just for a pulley. But if you have a used old alternator lying around, you can just pull the pulley from that and replace it. Now, as you can tell, these brushes are, you know, pretty simple. I want to show you how to repair your own brushes from your own alternator that's used. This is my used alternator brush kit. And I just repaired it. And you can see that I still left the very long wires which you're supposed to kind of cut off but i wanted to leave that uh to show to you guys that yeah i just did it um and here's my uh soldering job which is not the best in the world but guys 
I did it for free, basically. Um, I took the southern right off uh, the old wires and I basically reused it. And I didn't have to even buy it. And I don't have, uh, you know, my own stuff here. So it's going to be kind of funny, you guys, watching it and me trying to uh, actually do it. But guys, everything still worked uh, very nicely. And you could tell uh, these brushes, they're in there and they do work. Like, I could press them down. I don't know. If, well, I don't know if you, you could see that. Um, okay, but technically, I'm going to take my finger and I just press them down all with my finger. You could see there's like a little edge here. And then I depress them and I got to pull it out right there. Perfect. Found a pen. Um, so take a look at this here. So I'm going to take this pen. I'm going to put it there and you could see I am depressing them. Yeah. By the way, guys, I've been just working on this outside in the heat for about an hour. Not just on this, but I just rebuilt an alternator with a used one like this. And I decided to just out of the blue make a video about it because I'm like, can I do this? Uh, now, spoiler alert, this is my first time doing soldering at all. Like, I've never soldered uh, before in my life. I've seen it done on YouTube. Uh, but I kind of figured, hey, I want to learn. So I bought myself a really cool machine. And that's actually what I'm going to be using in this video. But uh, if you guys want the same type of machine like I got, I'm going to link it up in the description below. But my advice is pick yourself like a $10 soldering iron and just do this. But... The machine I got, I could do microchips and stuff and cell phones, you know, it's a special one. It's got a hot air station, hot plate station, southern station. I could control all the temperatures and stuff. But if you don't need all that fancy smanchy stuff, then, you know, just go normal. But, uh, guys, it's repaired. And this will work. If I install this right now back into my alternator, my alternator will work. Now, uh, the takeaway from this will be, um, first of all, to get one of these replaced with two bearings that only cost $19. But hey, if you got, like, if you just bought one of these kits and you got a couple of those magnets laying around and you're thinking, hey, can I repair my own? I say to you, yes, you can. And now you're going to save money like on an X alternator. But if you're somebody that's like an enthusiast and you got some brushes lying around from maybe like an old job, you could just solder on a couple more brushes of the same size right in. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step, guys. My name is Serge Zmoleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke. But I learned to solve problems on my own. Now, I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.